Abbas, I'm Jack the Greek, and welcome back for another video. Today on the Crossroad Barbecue, we're going to do some slow cooking. Yes, and what you can see in front of us is a big beef shank. There we go. It's around four kilos, and it's going to take us around four hours to cook our beautiful beef shank, Greek style, on the Crossroad Barbecue. We're also going to complement it with some beautiful mushrooms. We've got some, a different variety of mushrooms there, but we'll talk about that towards the end when we're making our beautiful mushroom sauce. And of course, our potatoes are here, and we're going to add them in the last hour of our cooking. First of all, the most important thing is, is to prepare a beautiful, we're going to keep it quite simple, but of course, we've got to put some olive oil. We put a little bit of olive oil, come in close and have a look how we do this. We just paste it on like that. And why I'm doing this is because it's going to help stick the salt and pepper and also give it a little bit of that olive oil flavour as well when it's cooking. Like that. And while I'm here, I'll just put a little bit in the actual tray itself. There we go. Beautiful. There we have it. Then, of course, we now need to put our salt and our pepper. So we'll just crunch it on there. Beautiful, freshly crushed pepper. Keep turning it round. Plenty of pepper, which will complement it with the potatoes later and obviously the mushroom sauce. And there we are. There's the pepper. All done. And then, of course, we need our salt. Again, a crushed salt, straight like this, beautiful. Plenty of salt is what you want. And while I'm doing it in the tray, because all the excess salt is falling into the tray, and that's fine because we're gonna use those juices later on with our potatoes when we put it in. And with my tray, all I've done with the tray is put a bit of a rack inside to keep the beef shank off the bottom of the tray and some paper underneath which helps with the cleaning. So there we are. We put olive oil, salt and pepper and that's it. Now we're going to get some real stock. Use of Campbell's. Happy with that. And we're just going to put it at the bottom. Just around. We want to keep as much moisture as we can as well. So I'm probably going to put about two cups and then another two cups of water. And with the cross row barbecue got all four burners on low and it's sitting around 300 degrees. It's going to drop to about 200 when I turn two burners off. And there we go, it's another two cups of water. Just like that. We'll go down to about 200 degrees when I put two burners off. And then we'll let that cook for a couple of hours. And what we'll do is, and then come back at two hour mark, have a look at it, make sure it's got enough water at the bottom to keep it moist. And then we will cook it. For what am I doing with my Beef shank. Yes, I'm keeping it upright, just like that. So you've got to grab a lot of foil and just put it on just like this. And I want to do it like this because I want to cook it a special way and see what happens with all the bone and the bone narrow that is sitting at the top of the shank. Instead of just putting it on the side and cooking it like a roast beef, you know, shoulder or lamb roast or anything like that. So I'll put that on just like this. And we'll need one more piece on the other side to seal it up completely. Oh, just like this. And there we go. Just like that. Now, it's the first time Jack the Greek is cooking it like this. And of course, cooking a beef shank. We've done many lamb shanks, Cypriot style, Greek style, on the Crossray barbecue. But this is the first. And the way I'm cooking it as well, upright like that. So there we have it, of course, with a cross road barbecue, the lid is high enough and it will allow you to cook it like that. So we'll turn the front two off now, because we do want to slow cook this for four hours and put it straight in like this. There we go. Beautiful. We're back in about two hours to see how it's Have going. Have the beef shank on the cross road barbecue now for just over two hours with two burners on low. And it's of course been covered with the foil. And I can start smelling it as it's cooking through now. So let's have a quick look and see if it's time to put the potatoes in. So I'll bring it out and put it here. Oh, bus. Look at that. Oh, yes. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Smells beautiful. And now we'll have a quick look. We're going to go through a bit more foil, unfortunately. Oh, oh. oh, oh. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. Let's have a look and see how it's going. Oh, bus. Look at that. Look at our beautiful, beautiful beef shank, as you can see there. Look, even in here, it's boiling away. Beautiful there, beautiful. Okay, I think it's okay now. I've probably got about two hours to go. And with the size of our potatoes that I want to cut, 
it's about time we put them in. So we're gonna cut our potatoes around the size just like that. You see my knife? Just about there. And we just place them around. And this is in Cyprus. Traditionally in Cyprus, they like to eat and have their potatoes this size when they make gleftigo, as an example, which is another dish that you can find on Jack the Greek's YouTube channel. So I'll cut them up quickly. And you could have done this earlier, but I thought I'll do it now. So you don't lose all the heat in the meat. But we'll put it back on the Crossray barbecue in about, about a minute now. And we should be right to go. For the potatoes, we now finish them. And let's just wipe our hands. And as you can see, I've put them all the way around. And of course, I've got some, some other little tricks up my sleeve that I'm going to put in now. And that's some onion and garlic. Oh, it's just a little bit slippery from earlier, from earlier on in the day. There we go. A bit of pepper all the way around. There we go. And all the potatoes. A bit more on the meat. Beautiful. And of course, some salt as well. The potatoes, just like this. And I'm going to keep this sauce underneath. And that's my, that's my plan. And that's why I'm maintaining the water and the stock that I had before. And now I'm going to put some onions and garlic. The garlic, just like this. As it is, I'm going to throw it in. And this is going to melt in the next two hours. And so is the onion. And it's going to become part of the sauce. There we go. It's a very cold day today. This is a very nice, beefy, stocky meal for the family on any cold, wintry day. So there we have it. We've got it there. Put it in all, all like that. And of course now, we're just going to cover it up with foil again. So we'll move it over and away we go. We'll grab our foil. Nice, big, long piece. And just put it straight over like that. Make sure it's completely sealed to keep in all the moisture and all the, all the heat as well. Just like this. Yeah. Opa, there we go. And this will take another two hours on around 200 degrees on the cross-ray barbecue. There we go. Beautiful. And we'll be back in around two hours. Check it out again. And then maybe even just take the foil off for a couple of minutes. Make sure the, the beef shank has nice caramelized and changed its color. Now I'm looking for my towels and here they are here. So we'll open up the Crossroad barbecue. Just put that back in. Just like that. And away we go. See you in about two hours. Bye bye. You're back with Jack the Greek and it's been around four and a half hours now since we've had our beautiful beef shank in the Crossroad barbecue. It's getting a bit late in the day and I've turned on our beautiful heaters, our outdoor heaters from Heat Strip as well, to keep us warm while we're cooking up and finalizing our beautiful meal. So what we're gonna do now is take it out, but I'm not gonna cover it. I'm pretty confident it's, it's cooked as I've had to put another layer on top of foil because it actually broke and it cracked. So we're gonna put it there. So we're gonna leave the beef shank rest there for around five or six minutes. Probably closer to 10. It is quite a large piece of meat and we want it to rest nice and easily without rushing. So the next thing we're going to do is make a beautiful mushroom sauce like I promised. So we're going to grab our pan, put a bit of olive oil in there, just like this, and put it straight on the crossroad barbecue. Away we go. And what we did was, before, we had our burners on low. Now I'm going to put them all on high. I don't need my left two, so I'll turn them off and just put the ones on the right here. That should take about 30 to 40 seconds to warm up. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you my mushrooms here. I've got a variety of mushrooms that I've just grabbed from our local supermarket. And they're the ones that I'm going to use. The smaller ones are going to break up. And of course, the larger ones, I want to keep them as whole. And what we're going to do that is complement it with a little bit of more beef stock, a bit of wine, and of course, famous thickened. So I'm cutting up now our mushrooms. Nice and rustic. Cut it up like this. And away we go, put that aside. Grab some of the pre-sliced mushrooms as well. You probably they need one or two more slices just there. Beautiful. And grab these as well, they're nice and sweet and beautiful mushrooms. And there we go. And of course, our large ones, I wanna keep them as they are. So I'm not gonna cut them up. I wanna put them in as they are, they're like this. So what I'll do is, there we go. We'll put the big ones in, 
just to get them going because they're the ones that are going to take the longest to cook and yep i do not want to cut these up i want to keep them full so we'll put them straight in and then we'll put in the rest of our smaller mushrooms and with these ones i just want to cut them a little bit more just like this break it all up and this becomes the sauce it should take us around six or seven minutes on the cross ray barbecue to put so there we go there are our mushrooms we've got our cream sauce we're going to get ready now as well beautiful thickened cream sauce we'll get that ready and of course our white wine and if, last but not least got to put as some you can see if you come close the whole mushrooms are starting to sizzle and it's been about a minute a minute and a half that i've had them in here and now it's time to add the rest of the mushrooms i'm just going to grab them and put them in like that Opa, beautiful the more mushroom variety you put in to your sauce the better the flavor that's the advice i can give you just like that beautiful we we'll put our pepper beautiful plenty of pepper in your mushroom sauce just like that and of course next we're going to put a little bit of beef stock just like that oh bass a little bit more and of course we need a little bit of white wine so we'll put that in and once this is all sort of melted down we'll then add of course our cream so let's have a look and see how it's going beautiful look at that excellent oh, bass. that's it once we've allowed the wine to to evaporate all the alcohol well then by then it should be ready to put in the cream so we'll just leave that there for a couple of minutes and if you come back here at the front what we're going to do next is have a look at our beef and prepare that now what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to put it into this pan now and let it finish its resting in that pan because what we're going to do is use the sauce to make some beautiful gravy so let's have a look oh bass we to take off the layers of the foil just like this let's have a look and see ah oh, beautiful look at this excellent oh, boy, 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 boy. look at that beautiful oh, love it love it so what we'll do is we'll just put it in here just like that we'll leave the potatoes there for a minute grab some foil quickly and cover it's there one more bit and then that will rest for another three or four minutes while we finish our sauce and obviously our gravy that's fine but i've obviously played up our potatoes so let's just put in our beautiful potatoes and come in close and have a look at these magnificent cypriot style potatoes beautiful look at them beautiful cooked all the way through They've been cooking away for nearly three and a half hours, these beautiful potatoes. Beautiful. There we go. They'll complement the dish magnificently. Okay, so there we have them. We'll put a couple more. And what we need to do now is get our pan ready for our beautiful gravy that we're also going to make as well. I could hear the kids from the inside saying, not just mushroom sauce, Dad. We want some gravy as well. So we're going to do that with the juices that are left over. From cooking the beautiful beef shank okay so with the gravy now what I'm gonna do is just take off the rack that I had in here it is still quite hot and just take everything off it so I'm looking behind me and the mushrooms are just about ready and I'm gonna have to get onto that very quickly but I'm just gonna take that off just like that and put it here and then put this onto the crossroad barbecue just to get warm and start bubbling up as you noticed I left the potato in there so I'm gonna mush it up to help thicken the sauce. So now for the mushrooms, to finish them off, we're gonna put a couple of tablespoons, three or four of some cream, thickened cream, and give them a stir as well. And that will thicken that up and make it into a beautiful, oh, beautiful sauce just there. I reckon we put a little bit more, to be honest. There we go. And there you go, it's getting dark. The birds are starting to crow out there you can hear them and the weather is still very rainy and cold here in Melbourne and this hearty beautiful beef 
shank meal that we've been cooking now nearly for five hours is going to be fantastic on a day like today. I can't wait to taste this. So there's our sauce. We're going to put these two on low and let it just simmer as well. And we'll get that ready. Okay, our mushroom sauce is now ready and we're going to turn off the two burners on the Crossway barbecue and quickly just jump over to our, our gravy. You can see that a lot of the water has evaporated now and we've just got the juices left with the beautiful um, onion and the garlic. So I'm just going to squash that up a little bit, just like this. You can use whatever you like to squash it. Put it through a blender if you want and then put it back on. But I'm just going to keep it nice and rustic like that. I'm also going to add a little bit of corn flour just to thicken it up as well, just like that. Oh, that will speed up the process and give us some beautiful gravy. There we go. And we'll give that about a couple of minutes. Okay, so as you can see, both our gravy is nearly ready. It's thickening up beautifully. And our mushrooms are all done as well. So let's quickly put in our mushrooms. As I was planning, just to grab one or two mushrooms and just put them around like that. I just want to put them amongst all the potatoes. There we go. Come in close and have a look at this beautiful meal steaming away, waiting patiently for the beef shank to come into the middle of the of the plate. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful. We'll put a few more, just like this. And I can hear it behind me, it's calling me, the gravy. The gravy is calling me. So it's time to get the gravy now. Probably enough there. Turn that off. And if you look at our gravy here, off bus. Look at this, beautiful. Beautiful thick sauce. Oh, all the juices, cooking for the last four and a half hours. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, nice and thick gravy. So with this, we just put it into one of our little containers on the side. And a small little side dish. And have that for the kids as well. Oh, bus. Here we go. Of course, we can't forget, we still have our beautiful beef shank to take out of its resting container, just here, and we'll get that ready now. There we have it, beautiful. Let's pull it out and have a look. Oh, yes, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Oh, it's quite hot still. Put it in there like that and there we go ladies and gentlemen our beautiful three and a half four kilo beef shank cooked on the crossroad barbecue for around four and a half hours with potatoes and mushrooms cream sauce with some gravy on the side by jack the green bye bye